Our next guest is Lisa Cooley, who's uh, very active on research on galaxies and how they evolve over the last 10 or 12 billion years. So Lisa, what do you think is the biggest astronomy breakthrough in the last few decades? I think the biggest astronomy breakthrough is the discovery of the cosmic microwave background. Um, this happened in 1964, so it was about th five decades ago. Uh, but what it really did was it brought the Big Bang Theory from a, a, just an, an idea and a theory into a solid uh, picture that, that we now think really happened in the universe. And, so, and it was an accidental discovery. There were two astronomers in the US, in fact lots of astronomers around the world were, were trying to discover the cosmic microwave background at the time, it wasn't just these two. Uh, but they had built a very sensitive radiometer which is a thing that measures the power that comes out of a radio telescope and they also had a very nice uh, radio telescope dish which they attached it to and when they attached it they discovered that there was this radiation that was coming from everywhere in the sky and they didn't know what it was from and they first thought it was bird droppings, pigeon droppings in fact, and so they got on the telescope and they cleaned it all off and then they shot the pigeons and then what they did is they measured it again, still there, and they didn't know what it was so they called their friend uh, at Princeton and asked them what it might be and he said well it might be the cosmic microwave background so they agreed to publish two papers, one on the discovery and one on the interpretation of the fact that it probably likely came from the Big Bang. So do you see that discovery as being the most important part or the subsequent measurement of all the deviations? That, so we've talked a lot about the deviations, the fluctuations that tell us all about sort of that time right after the Big Bang. Yeah, so I think, I think both are extremely important. We wouldn't have been able to measure the deviations without the initial discovery. Um, but then, and I think what makes something a great discovery is then it opens up an entirely new field of research, which is what this did, because suddenly we could investigate the cosmic microwave background and we're still investigating the cosmic microwave background right now even looking for gravitational waves. So let's think a little bit more into the future. So speculating about the future is probably futile yet we do it all the time and how we plan our our, our lives actually. Yeah so what do you see as being the most exciting thing that you think is going to happen if we were to have this conversation 10 years from now we would say since 2014 What's the big thing that will have happened in astronomy over that time? Yeah, so the next 10 years is a really exciting time for astronomy because what's going to happen is that all of our current telescopes that we have right now are going to become what, what we would call intermediate size. And so we're entering a revolution in size of telescopes. And so we're going from telescopes that are about 8 or 10 metres as our largest telescopes to telescopes that are 20 or 30 meters. Our radio telescopes are also increasing massively in size. Our space telescopes are going to increase massively in size. And the last time this happened was in the late 1990s when we w were building our you know, 8 to 10 meter telescopes and our large radio telescopes that we have now. And what those telescopes did in the late 1990s was that they opened up a whole new area of discovery space and so for example the discovery of the fact that the universe is accelerating was enabled by the fact that we had larger telescopes in space and larger telescopes on ground and also for example the discovery of extrasolar planets wouldn't have been possible without these large telescopes on ground and so I think we're going to enter a new discovery space again, major discovery space, by having these large telescopes on the ground as well as in space. And it opens up a whole new, whole new areas. Uh, in particular, I think we're going to really be able to understand what happened much closer to the Big Bang, um, the epoch of reionization, where the first stars and the first galaxies formed. That's what we're really going to try to probe. And also, we're going to try to understand, um, lot, well, whether other planets might be able to harbour life. So we're going to be able to study planets that are the same size as Earth and then look at what's in their atmospheres, what are they made of, and um, could there possibly be life on them. So I think it's, it's very exciting. So what do you think you will discover in the next 10 years? With this? <laughs> um, I'm trying to bridge the gap between what we understand now about galaxies looking back about 12 billion years to the epoch of reionization. So I'm looking into the amount of ionizing radiation in galaxies. And what I hope to discover is how the ionizing radiation changed in galaxies across cosmic time going right back to when the first galaxies formed in the universe. So really trying to figure out how galaxies themselves got started in this universe. Yeah. Now if you look further ahead, which is even more futile, but let's do it anyway, 
Um, now let's imagine we're looking maybe 100 years ahead. Uh, what do you think will be the big breakthroughs that the astronomers in 100 years from now will say, oh, gosh, the last 100 years have been exciting, here's what we've learned. <laughs> So I think in a hundred years there will have been new, entirely new uh, parameter spaces opened up in astronomy for discovery. So for example, we will have detected gravitational waves. Once we detect gravitational waves then it's a bit like the cosmic microwave background because that opens up that particular thing, gravitational waves, for study of physics, real fundamental physics in the universe. So we're going to be able to see whether Einstein's general relativity was correct and we'll be able to really try to look at the physics of supermassive, of, of black holes, black holes that are merging. And, but I think what we're going to be doing in a hundred years is trying to understand the physics of the universe very close to the Big Bang and also um, just, you know, fundamental things like general relativity or whether there, whether there needs to be a different theory. You're not worried about running out of, out, out of fuel on the way there, that we just sort of run out of ideas, we run out of technology? No, it hasn't happened so far. I think what's happened so far is that if we look back over our history, every time we have larger and larger telescopes and more and more discoveries, it actually makes more questions to answer rather than less. Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.